everyone, and welcome. Uh, I've got an exciting message for you today. It's something that's really, really um, debated hard. Uh, it comes against a lot of believers uh, really hard. Uh, and this is a scripture that is really, really misunderstood. I want to, uh, through the scriptures, show clarity through it by proof of the scriptures so that this will straighten us out once and for all, hopefully, <laughs> but I'm sure it probably won't as we'll probably get other things. But I just want to say thank you for tuning in today. Thank you for being with us. Be sure and subscribe below and hit the uh, um, button there for, for notifications so that you'll get future videos from us. But I want you to pay close attention. I want you to go to the scriptures we go to. I want you to write them down. I want you to go back and study them because this is very, very important. First of all, I want to turn to Psalms 18, if you would. This is speaking of King David. Uh, you know, we all know about David, that David had sinned, uh, and people bring that out a lot of times, that David had sinned with Bathsheba and, and her husband Uriah in murdering him and committing adultery. And a lot of people like to use David as an excuse for their own sin. But I want you to know that David was a man after God's own heart and that he, he had totally repented of that. He totally put that away in his life. And you'll never find another recording of David ever doing anything like that again. As a matter, matter of fact, in 2 Corinthians 15, he's, the, the, the scripture says that God says that David Chronicles. sinned in that, and that was it. And when you get to Psalms 18, David had gone through a tremendous repentance. Before, he had hated the commandments of God. You see in Psalms, he talks about how much he loves the commandments of God. He loved them. He said that he hid his, his, God's word in his heart that he would not sin against him. He said he esteemed God's word um, more than like it was one finding treasure. He esteemed it higher than that. He was a man that really had turned to God with all of his heart. And I want you to listen to some of the quotations that David makes and remarks. It's in Psalms 18, and I want to go to uh, start at verse um, uh, verse 19. He said, he brought me forth also into a large place. He delivered me because he delighted in me. The Lord rewarded me according to his righteousness? No, according to my righteousness, David said. That's right. According to the cleanness of my hands hath he repaid me. Listen to what he says. For I have kept the ways of the Lord and have not wickedly departed from him. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm not sinning against God. I have not departed from not sinning with God. For all his judgments were before me, and I did not put, put away his statutes for me. I've kept them. I was also upright before him, and I kept myself from sin. David said, I did, I'm not sinning. I've kept myself from sin. Amen. Therefore hath the Lord repaid me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands in his eyesight. In God's eyesight, he said, I was pure. I was holy. I was without sin. Now, somebody's going to say, if you go along, oh, nobody can say this. David said it. Amen. He said, I'm not sinning. I have not sinned since Bathsheba and all that mess over there. He said, I'm walking upright in God's eyes and in my own. The Lord has rewarded me according to my righteousness. Somebody would say, well, oh, David. This is what they would tell David. They would quote to David. They said, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. So are you saying that David is deceiving himself, and the truth is not in King David? Yeah. You better go back and read the Old Testament of what God said about David. Matter of fact, the Bible even calls Jesus the son of David. His lineage came from David. He blessed David. He, said, he talked about whenever a king walked uprightly, he said he walked like my servant David. God thought a lot of David. And you're going to tell David in verse 8, because the way you quoted it, you're saying that you, if you say you don't have to sin, David said he didn't have any sin. And you're saying that David was deceiving himself. God's word you're going against. You better be careful. You better know what this scripture says. And I'm going to share with you, rest an hour, what this scripture is really talking about. Because you need to get it down. You say, well, you're excited. I am. Because I've heard this so many times, misquoted by people. And you need to understand what he's saying here. First of all, you need to understand who he's talking to. That's and right. when he goes into the scripture, he talks about this. And he starts in verse 3. He says, those things that you both see, that have we seen and we heard, we're declaring unto you 
that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his, with his Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. The first question I would have if you read this, you would say, you would say to yourself, David, these people you're talking to, you telling them that they don't have fellowship with you? And they don't have fellowship with the Father and the Son? That's exactly what he said. That's right, John. That's exactly what he said. Yeah, John's trying to get them to have fellowship. So if, if, I, if I say, hey, Don, would you like to have fellowship at my house with these other brothers? And, I, and then I had some requirements or let's say some stipulations on what you need to do or what you need to wear for this you know, gathering you would have to abide by, you know, the regulations that I would have for you to come into fellowship. That's right. That's and right. so John here is saying, we want you to have fellowship with us, meaning they don't have fellowship right. with, with the Father. They don't have fellowship with Jesus Christ, the righteous, right? And they don't have fellowship with John. And they don't have fellowship with John. This is so important. Because I want you to remember when we taught on 2 Corinthians chapter 6, Jesus, said, Jesus says this. He says, have no fellowship with, uh, with, with, uh, don't be on the yoke with unbelievers. He says, what fellowship does light have with darkness? None. Why couldn't they fellowship here? Because light and darkness can't, can't fellowship. These people were still in darkness that he's talking to right now. So they couldn't have that fellowship. He says, come out from among them and be separate, saith the Lord, and then I will receive you. So right. what did these people need to do? They needed to come out from whatever darkness they were in so that the Lord could receive them. Then he goes further. And John says, this is the message that I give to you so that your joy may be full. Right. Now, when you're in Christ, your joy is full. Amen. The Bible says that, and he gives us a joy that no man can take away. But these particular people don't have fellowship with him, and they don't have a joy. They don't have a full joy. So watch when he goes further. And he says, this message that I bring and declare to you is that God is light, and in him is no darkness. Why are you saying that, John? Because these people are still in darkness. But in the next verse, he says, if we say that we're in the light and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. That's right. So if you say, they, they, like, okay, you're saying you're in the light, but you're walking in darkness, you're, you're lying and you don't know the truth. That's right. And we know darkness is sin. And that's why Paul in uh, Ephesians chapter 5, he says, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but Amen. rather expose them. So that's what John's doing here. He's not having fellowship with these people, but he wants to have fellowship with them. So he's explaining how so they So he's exposing what they need to do so that they can have fellowship. Exactly. So, so why, that's why he says in verse 6, he says, if we say, if you're saying that you have fellowship with Christ then, and you're walking in darkness, you're lying. And the truth's not in you. Go back again. Remember the beginning, what he was saying to them. And I have to keep repeating this because I want you to get this. He says, we're declaring these things to you so that you also may have fellowship with us. John was having fellowship with the Father and the Son, Jesus Christ. He's saying, pleading with him, we want to have fellowship with you. But we can't have that fellowship. You don't have fellowship with the Father and the Son yet. I'm declaring these things so that you will. And then he says the next verse after that, in verse 7, he says, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light then we have fellowship one with another and the blood of jesus christ cleanses us from all sin so this is what he's trying to do guys you need to understand what john is doing he does the same thing i do or west does when we share with people we want to share with them listen guys we want to have fellowship with you but in order to have fellowship with you you're going to have to come out of darkness you're going to have to stop sinning Amen. you're going to have to get things right and you know what the first thing is that I tell people when they need to get things right? First thing you need to do is you need to admit that you got sin in you. Amen. Now watch what John does. The first thing John does, verse 8, right? He says this. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If you don't admit that you have sin before you come to Christ, before you have fellowship with him, and you won't admit it, then you can't get anywhere. So, so what you're saying is this is not the message to 
someone that's in Christianity. No, ab- absolutely not. This, this is someone that didn't have fellowship. This with. is somebody that does not have fellowship. You know, that's right. and, and so the one that they're has, not connected to Christ in fellowship. So he's trying to plead with these people. He's trying to plead with him. The first thing you're going to do when you do that, Wes, is you're going to you want the person to admit that they have sin. You know, when I confront people on the street or, or people at a loss, and I confront them, the, the thing that always they get angry at is when I confront them with the sin because they don't want to admit that they have that sin. The person here the other night we were talking to, him, and he was like, well, no, "No, I'm good, I'm good." Then I started. Explaining to him, I said, "What are you doing this? Are you doing well? Yeah, I'm doing that." And then he started getting upset because they don't want to be confronted. John is confronting them. He said, "Listen, I want to have fellowship with you, but you got the darkness has got to go." And the first thing you need to do is admit that you have sin. Then what's the next thing that John says? Verse nine, he said, "If we confess, I say, okay, you admitted it. I got sin. Okay, what's the next? Thing? Next thing is confession." If you confess your sin, then he's faithful and just to forgive you for your sin and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Isn't that the way you, you share with people? But it, no, that people want to say, oh, no, they pull that scripture out and say, everybody's got to say they don't have no sin. I don't have to say that. I don't have any sin. I've been through this right. already. I admitted that I had sin. I confessed my sin, and he was faithful and just to forgive me. So if I confess my sin, and he's faithful and just to forgive me, how much sin do I have left after that? Zero. You have no sin because he's cleansed you. From all, all unrighteousness. So if you're cleansed from all unrighteousness, you would be a liar to say that you would still make you a liar. have sin in your life. And just like David, David had to confess his sin when Nathan came to him and gave him the parable of like the you First lamb and all that. He had to confess it. He had to confess it and say, and, 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 and Nathan goes, you know, he said, that man must die. And he's like, Nathan said, that man is you. That's right. Right. And David had to and swallow he, he that to fact swallow That's right. and say, hey, you know what? That man that man is me. And he thought like, well, maybe I'm going to die. And, and so Nathan said, God takes away his sin and he's not going to kill him. But at the same time, David had to take this step. He could not have written Psalms 18 if he didn't Come take on. this step. David said, the Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness. David had admitted the sin. David had confessed and forsake the sin. He had been through that. He, you don't, you wouldn't, be, you wouldn't believe verse nine if he said, oh, I still got sin. You just confessed it. And he said he was faithful and just to forgive you for it. So how much sin you got left? None. Zero. So do you know what I say? I don't have any sin. I confessed it. God forgave me for it. He freed me from from the power of sin and dominion. Get rid of the sin. Oh my! And look, confess. if that's not enough, look at look at First John, chapter two. He says he says uh, he says my little children, I'm writing these things to you that you don't sin. Don't right. sin. Then he says in verse 4, verse 3, I mean, he says in chapter 2, he says, he that says, I know him, he that says, I'm a Christian, and doesn't obey his commandments, it's there's your liar, liar and the truth's not in you. Right. And then in the next obey. verse, he says, but who, but he says, he that says, oh, oh, well, I'm sorry, verse 3 was, hereby we do know that we know him if we Keep obey his commandments. his commandments. You know you're a Christian if you obey And his if you're keeping his commandments, are you sinning? That would be the question. You couldn't be sinning if you're keeping his commandments because sin is transgression of the law. John further goes on to say in 1 John chapter 5, he was born of God, it keeps himself and the way, does not sin. He keeps himself. How does he not do, does not sin? He keeps himself and the wicked one does, does not, not touch, touch him. him. What does David say back in Psalms 18? He says, for I have kept the ways of the Lord. I have not wickedly departed from my God. Exactly. He says, I am I have kept myself from my iniquity. Same I've kept first myself John 5, from just, sin. Just exactly. Like John, first John so 5, so that's that's what we're saying. David is practically working righteousness. And if David's a man after God's own heart, David's not a man after the you know the the, the devil's heart. He's a man after God's own heart. And if David can say this. We as New Testament believers should be able to say Amen. this as well. Same way. Same way. So it's nothing wrong with saying that you don't sin. Amen. You'd be lying if you if if you were if you were not sinning you and you say, Well, I'm still sinning, you'd be lying and the truth's not in you then. So guys, next this is something that I wanted to really bring forth to you because I'm uh, I'm I'm really fed up with the devil using this against people. Right. It's not boasting. You do only doing that which is your duty to do. Luke seventeen ten says you only you, you're supposed to be walking uprightly. You're supposed to be walking without sin, and you and you. It's okay to say it. 
because David said it and many others said it throughout the scriptures. So next time somebody tries to come and just pull out verse eight, verse eight, you go back and you tell them these people did not have fellowship with the Father, the Son, and the Son Jesus Christ or John. These people did not have a joy that no man could take away. That's why he said the first thing you need to do is you need to admit that you've got sin. Then the next thing you need to do is confess your sin and forsake it, and then you cleansed from all unrighteousness and you don't have any sin. You're you're walking in the light and that's when you're walking in the light you yeah, come out true. of darkness if somebody's come completely out of darkness where are they at they're in the light and now their their lifestyle their walk is amen. in the light they're not in sin anymore amen listen I, w- I want you to go over this over and over and i want you to send this to people out there i want you to remember this i want you to send it out there because this is a powerful tool because this is the truth of the gospel of jesus christ amen we're only one truth And that's the only one truth. Thank you for tuning in today. Be sure and subscribe below and hit the notification button so you'll get future future videos. But use this tool and know that know with the scriptures. The Bible says to know that scripture. Study to show yourself approved, a workman that needs not be ashamed. This is the word of God. God bless you, and we'll see you next time. Amen.